Hey everybody, a video today on something I've wanted to talk about for quite a while. This is an ancient site in Egypt called Napta Playa, and it is located a couple hundred miles south of Cairo and the Great Pyramids. But along with the Great Pyramids and the Sphinx, this site seems to be a real head scratcher, um, very ancient, and has some astronomical alignments built into it. And this is Crystal Links. I will leave the link below and also some other links in case any of you want to read on on this subject. But it says this. In the quest to find a unified sacred cosmology linking above with below, we come to the study of archaeoastronomy. And it goes on just to show what the site looks like. And it talks about work uh, a Thomas Brophy has done. And it says this. The research done by astrophysicist Thomas Brophy suggests that these monoliths might tell us much more. The calendar circle itself is made up of one doorway that runs north-south, a second that runs northeast-southwest, marking the summer solstice, and six center stones. Brophy's hypothesis proposes first that the southerly line of the three stones inside the calendar circle represented the three stars of Orion's belt, and the other three stones inside the circle represented the shoulder and head stars of Orion as they appeared in the sky. And he says that two dates are represented here, 148 uh, 100 BC and the other 6270 BC. He says that the circle that was constructed and used circa the later date and the dual date representation was a conceptual representation of the motion of the sky over a processional cycle. And he said that these two dates between 6400 BC and 4900 BC that are represented match the radio carbon dating of campfires around the circle. Brophy found that the lines made to these megaliths match the spots in the sky where the various stars rose in vernal equinox helical risings. In analyzing the variant distances and mulling through assumptions such as that they represented the brightness of the stars, he inadvertently found that they matched the distance of the stars from the Earth on a scale of roughly one meter per 0.8 light years and within a margin of error for astronomical distance, distances calculated today. And it goes on to say this. Brophy realized that whoever created Napta Playa might have been in possession of advanced knowledge of our Milky Way. The bedrock sculpture, which was found deep in the ground, appears to be a made-to-map scale of the Milky Way as viewed from the outside, from the perspective of the North Galactic Pole. The map correctly indicates the position, scale, and orientation of our Sun and the placements of the spiral arms, the galactic center, and even the associated Sagittarius dwarf galaxy that was only discovered in 1994. Brophy was able to determine from Wendorf's accurate diagrams and maps that the central point was directly above and surely represented the correct position of our Sun on the galaxy map. And it goes on to finish this. Th this way it says, Brophy then made another key discovery. One of the megalithic sight lines stood in relation to the galactic center. Its alignment marked the galactic center's vernal helical rising circa 17... 1700 BC. Amazingly, the orientation of the galactic plane in the sculpture also represented, also corresponded with this date. Brophy concluded that the stone sculpture was a map of the Milky Way as seen from the standpoint of the northern galactic pole. So we have some truly amazing astronomical alignments in the site in Napta Playa, and we're still kind of discovering exactly what they are. Um, now I'm going to finish this upload with a clip from the Pyramid Code. They don't go into this uh, quite as much as I did here, but it gives you a good general overview of this very ancient site of Napta Playa. Enjoy. Here we have this, this bunch of huge megaliths that were dragged from God knows where and placed in, in, in a pattern, uh, a sort of center point of the whole area. It's essential that we do not disturb the stones, we don't touch anything, we just look at them. Because the alignments are there and they've been there for thousands of years, undisturbed, and we can use them to date this place.
a group of archaeologists led by Fred Wendorf called the Combined Prehistoric Expedition, by chance found some pottery shards at Napta Playa. They thought that the megaliths were just outcrops of rock. And then they started to realize, well, these are setting on top of Playa sediments, you know, sediments that were built up during the Neolithic time. Uh, and so how did they get there? And so they, they had to get there from man. These are man-made objects, these megaliths. One of the possible links to Egypt before the pharaohs is that Napta Playa became climatically hyper-arid like it is today, around 3800 BC. It has not been lived at or used since. It has been assumed by historians that Egypt borrowed its complex society from Mesopotamia. However, it is now generally recognized that a process of social complexity is not diffused from one location to another, but rather develops locally. Uh, they, they, they use the position of the sun to mark the, the specific days of the year, and the, the main stations of the year, of course, are the summer sources, the winter sources, and the two equinoxes. No doubt, they track the sun through the year, and therefore they had a calendar. This structure may not appear significant above ground, Looking beneath the surface reveals an enigma. These complex structures are the most enigmatic remaining aspects of Napta Pi. When they excavated the central one, the largest one, underneath the surface, down in the Playa sediments, the Playa sediments about 10 feet deep, they found this megalithic sculpture. Some people call it the cow stone. Uh, it has perhaps a vague resemblance to a cow, but it also seems maybe to have an astronomical meaning because it's in this astronomical complex. And then underneath the sculpted stone, on the bedrock, underneath all the sediments that were laid down earlier, they found another sculpture, sculpted out of the living bedrock, and sort of like the Sphinx is sculpted out of the bedrock. The bedrock sculpture was carved and sediment filled it in over thousands of years. Then the cow stone was carved and placed there, and then sediment filled it in again. We are looking at three subsurface layers of sediment. This is a clue to the extreme age of Napta Playa. Yes. Yeah. A double alignment of blocks, 250 meters long, points to the brightest stars in the belt of Orion. The second line points to the rising position of Sirius. Another long line of stones aligns to the brightest star of the Big Dipper, which later Egyptians represented as a cow thigh or leg. The stele faced the circumpolar region of the heavens, which the pyramid texts describe as a place where the stars never die. They've got uh, Orion's belt and Sirius. What's interesting is that they seem to be tracking them, not just the line in two, but they seem to be tracking them over the movement over a long period of time. So they knew the stars moved, and they knew that the sun moved the same every year on an annual cycle. Maybe the whole ceremonial complex has something to do with the age of Gemini and transition to the age of Taurus. The constellation of Taurus is represented by a bull. If we are talking about the transition to the age of Taurus, was the symbolism of cows in ancient Egypt connected to the nomadic cattle cults prevalent in the area? So astronomy is telling us that there's a link. Now we need the anthropologists and the Egyptologists to find that link. The problem is that most of these disciplines are so entrenched in their own little world that it's very difficult to move people one side or the other. And I mean, I don't know how it is in the United States, but in Britain, in his own little world, and people who deal with text won't talk to people who deal with sites in the same discipline. It's becoming more than obvious. Now I think it is. That there are there are connections. connections. Of course there are, and they're very, very important connections because there are no other answers for the moment anyway, and this is as good as any. Yeah.